So here's a parenting tip, right? Okay. Not, not a great parenting okay. tip, but a parenting tip is if you see something in your child that you don't like that they're doing, the first thing to do is look at yourself and fix it in yourself. Mm. Because your child most likely is picking it up from you. Yeah. Right? They're, they're little mirrors. It's so scary because it's <laughs> it like they say some word it's and awful. you're like, it's awful. Where did you get that word? And then all of a sudden you realize you're saying it like every third word. You're like, I didn't even realize I was doing that. Let's pivot to family. Mm-hmm. Let's talk about um, when you think about running a business, you're running a business that isn't in the state or is it in the state or how is it? It is. We are. And the majority of the revenue is in Baltimore and D.C. So our, our biggest revenue is in Baltimore and D.C. And then we have a team here in Charleston and we have a team in Florida. So we operate in Florida, South Carolina, Virginia, D.C., Maryland, and occasionally Delaware. Okay. So how do you, how do you balance uh, marriage, kids, and a business that mostly isn't here? That is a very excellent question. I feel like uh, I just, hmm. that balancing all of that, I think, I don't think we do it well, necessarily. We do the best that we can. Sure. um, When we move that things through. A lot of it is, looking at, I just look at my productivity. So that came through kind of learning disability that we talked about, right? So productivity pieces and family is I just, I try to touch all of those things and move them forward in a way at the same time. I don't know. I feel like I'm kind of all over the place. I'm not explaining this very well. Um, That's Okay. I think the, the most powerful thing you said so far is that we don't do it well. I don't do it well. Um, I mean, I, I think that's a very transparent true. and truthful I, answer. Like, that's great. I mean, we, we learn. It's okay to not be okay. I was going to say, it's okay not to be okay. We, we learn as we go. And so some things that I think about as I think about balancing all those things yeah. is, you know, it goes back to having just being intentional about time and the things and what I'm doing. And so putting down things um, and really I think the way that I do that now, my love language is service. So I gravitate naturally to service and doing things, but it's really about laying down. So we're talking about lifeguards, right? It's really about laying down your life for the things, right? Mm. I don't really have, I have zero time, personal time. You know, I haven't played golf in 25, 30 years. Whoa. Right? Because that was just, as soon as I started grad, I haven't played since I started grad school and we had a kid. Right? Um, I have one that's starting to play, so I may, I may get back to it. Uh, but when, I, you say, when you say zero personal time. Yeah. What do you mean by zero? Zero. Do you I'm, mean literally zero? zero? I mean, it's... I mean, my personal time is like if we can get the kids to go to bed and I get 45 minutes a night. I work out of the house, right? Right. So we work out of the house. Um, so I don't have commute time, right? Um, I work out of the house. I don't have commute time. We homeschool our kids. Okay. Right? So the kids are there all so day. So the kids are there all day. Um, and so we have time with them. You know, my wife and I are together more than most couples, you know, time-wise. So, now, that, that, so that, that can be a real challenge too. That can be a challenge. Yeah. You know, and then what I think about is also quality time. So like my wife and I, we're together. Right. But are we together? Right. Like that's, that's a totally different thing, right? Yeah. In, in the inflection is that. Are, are you? Our, our quality <laughs> time. Well, when I say that, it's like a lot of times we just get in these ruts Right. And I think that's the words we get in these ruts where it's like we're just talking business and we're just talking like it's just all a matter of fact and moving things forward. What are we doing with the kids? What are we doing with the business? What are we doing with the business? Church. So the neighbors. There's a birthday party on Saturday. Saturday. 
You're just basically just getting through the day. We're just we're just getting through the day on most days. That's pretty much how I go. And I remember reading to bring it back around is so when I say personal time, it's it's learning about the things that you're going to sacrifice. So another example that I heard is like my lawn. You know, I live in this nice, beautiful. You do landscaping, right? My yard looks terrible. It's it's junk. But I made that choice specifically because it's like maintaining a lawn, right? It takes a lot of time. It does. And it takes effort. A lot of effort. I don't have that time and effort. Sure. So I don't worry about my yard looking terrible and what my neighbors are thinking. Right. And that it's the worst one. Maybe I'll deal with that when the kids are out of the house and I'll decide to put in a nice yard and maintain it because I'll have time. So I am neglecting my lawn and the way that my neighbors may look at me or think about me, right? And sacrificing that in an effort to spend time with my kids, to spend time building my business, to spend time with my wife, right? Like those are the three most important things in my life right now. Um, And so trying to just focus on those areas and not spend time everywhere else. I'm not saying that I don't have zero time. There is something like, obviously I have to rest and sleep and I have to. um, How much sleep do you get a night? Well, I try to shoot for eight, but I'll probably get around seven. I actually sleep. I mean, I, I, you know, to me, it's more about being one thing that we have to talk about is in this, how do I get it all done? Another way of thinking about that is I think about being impactful and not just busy. Yeah. Right. So I think about like, is what I'm doing being impactful? Mm. Um, So most of the time when I'm sitting down at my desk or I'm sitting down, I'm asking myself one question. That question is, this is the most important thing I need to be doing right now. Right? Yeah. Um, And so trying to think about, you know, is it the most important thing that I need to be doing right now? Is this the most impactful thing for my life and moving me forward? Um, And and that kind of what drives me to help me do all those things. So, you know, I mean last night and and then some of the productivity stuff comes in. So I try to, you know, I, one of my favorite productivity hacks is habit stacking. So trying to stack things together. Right. So all my girls last night went to a play. So David and I, my youngest is a boy. We're the only two boys. How does he? He's five. Okay. So we had guys night, boys night. Nice. He's been waiting all week. Right. Boys night. I'm also working on remodeling our bathroom. Um, so I've got that project going on. So how I can habit stack those, what I, so what we did is, you know, a five-year-old, he just wants to spend time. Like, you know, like I didn't have to come up with something crazy. So we just went, we got dinner together, and then we went to Lowe's. It's like Target for guys, right? Yeah. Like, went to Lowe's, we looked at all the cool stuff. It's like, man, this is like the stuff that, you know, AC is like, that's exactly an AC event, right, buddy? Like, that's what that is. So, I mean, we just walked around Lowe's. He thought it was great, right? Yeah. I got the paint and the supplies and things I needed for the bathroom. I got time to spend time with David. You know, we had boys night, like stacking all those things together. Yeah. Like, you know, that was, and that was kind of a non-stressful, you know, but that was Friday night. I'm not going out downtown. I wasn't going hanging with my guys. I'm not yeah. going to get drinks. I'm not going yeah. to, you know, it, it's, I'm not doing those things are good. I mean, you need community. You need to spend time with friends. Yeah. Um, but that's the way that I kind of think about those things. And, you know, my Friday nights don't look like they used to. Okay. So let's talk a little bit about your personal life as a man, as a husband, as a father, as a business owner, leader, um, and some of your just practical tips for life, kind of what you try to live by. Um, you get about seven or eight, eight hours of sleep a night. Mm-hmm. Uh, what time do you wake up? Oh, uh, we're not early risers. I'm a, I'm a late, That's late okay. night worker. What time? So I'm usually getting up around 7.30. So up at 7.30, what time are you going to sleep? Midnight. Midnight. Okay. Mm-hmm. Kids are in bed at a certain time or? Most bed? of the time we try to get them in bed around eight. They're getting older and staying up later now. So that's, 
you know, with kids, it's always transitioning. It's never, a, yeah. a, a, never a set thing. But it's a yeah, moving target. It is a moving are target. Are they all in bed typically though by some time or? My older two are actually trying to, they're staying up pretty late okay. with us now. Um, my the, oldest writes, so she stays up writing because the house is quiet when all the kids go to bed. Yeah. Um, but yeah, our, our, I mean, our typical day. Yeah. Right. So up at 7.30, um, you know, I, I get up. Generally, I I like to get started as soon as my feet hit the ground. So I I mean I like to go sit down and get going. Yeah. Um, I'm trying to change that a little bit because I don't eat breakfast and skipping things. So I'm trying to uh-huh. incorporate a little bit better in that way. But generally, I just start right out of the gate, start working. Those are my you know kind of energetic um, hours. But I'll work for about four hours and then I generally stop around lunchtime. Okay. Uh, and, and work out. So by the time I'm kind of feeling tired. And, and kind of groggy. Yeah. Um, I'll stop and do some exercise, work out, go run. Lunch? Um, sometimes. Okay. Uh, yeah, that's another one I'm working on. So you don't on. eat much. I don't eat much. Uh, it's So we have different we have it, different it, ditches it, on, it, on the food it, side it, of things. Yeah, <laughs> yeah so they, they keep telling I, nutrition I, is... I eat a little too much, and it sounds like, like you, you don't eat enough. I'm like, no, I don't. I'm happy to <laughs> share <laughs> some, of, <laughs> some of the calories. If you can send some calories my way, that I will. Good. I'll give them to you. It, it, and, and my wife is always like, I, I don't understand. Like, just, I'm like, I don't know. Like, it's just not a... Do you try to do any kind of like intermittent fasting or do you not intentionally? Not intentionally, but but, it happens. but you do. <laughs> yeah. All uh, right. So so you're up, you're rolling. Mm. Um, what's the rhythm mm-hmm. for your marriage? So tell me about your marriage. Tell me about what is the rhythm for do you have a date night? Do you have any type of, you know, connection mm-hmm. points? What does that look like? That's it's a great question. That is like so we spend most all our time together. Um and so, but maybe not together, not together. So that's something honestly that we're working on as well and trying to process through, um, as we work together. Okay. The day nights for us have been, we used to do that once a month on the 12th, which was our anniversary. Oh, okay. So we would try to do that on the 12th once a month. On our anniversary. We have not been very good about that. That's kind of fun lately. to pick the anniversary date. Yeah. Just the, the, you know, ours is the 31st. So, like, so, yeah. Okay. So, it just, like, That's every fun. time the 12th rolls around, like, it's like, hey, we should go on a date. We Have you have you been doing that? We have not. It's kind of fallen okay. off with the kids. Sure. That was another one of those where, like, with the Like, business, with the first kid? Um, like, five kids ago? Or no, like, no, no. Or, like, it, the like fifth two, kid? Like, sometime around COVID when we kind of purchased the business. Oh, okay. The business kind of shifted our entire family. So You've had now, a lot going on. Had a lot going on. Now, where it has really been great, so while that's kind of dropped off, we've done a lot of business traveling. So it feels like we've taken all these little mini vacations. Oh, that's cool. You know, like we've, we have to keep flying to Maryland. We're going to Vegas in November. Oh, cool. Uh, What's in Vegas? The, the show? The big wedding show. Okay. Yeah, not cool. excited about it being in Vegas, but it's there every year. It is so what it is. It is what it is. Yeah. Um, so we've gotten to travel a lot in the last 18 months together, which has been fun. I think that's where, like, as things have shifted, you know, we used to do this monthly date night. Yeah. Um, now we have um, taken those where we have traveled some. I mean, just this week, Emily came back. So I've been trying to sit down. We've been trying to sit down. So we've been trying to move. One thing is when you're talking about change or trying to improve improvement, right? So it's changing environments. So a lot of times yeah. we're in the office, right? My wife came home this week to got some sushi. So we actually just sat out on our back porch, had like a little sushi lunch till together, right? Told the kids. What we're really having to do now is tell the kids to go away. Yeah. That's our biggest thing is to tell the kids. Love you. Love you. Get the heck out of here. Leave. That's exactly what we say. <laughs> like, because they, they Mom told, and dad need they, some couch time or some. So at the end of the, the day, the older kids the are yeah sitting down there like staring at us. And we're like, <laughs> I, I don't care what you do. Just don't be here. Yeah. Um, so making those spaces is what needs to be intentional. You can do it with, like I said, the 12th was a method that we've used. Yeah. We've probably been less intentional. But just trying to find those times, like I said, now it's not so structured in the month, 
but we are getting to kind of take these, like I said, folly vacations, even though they're business and work trips. How many? How many you know, is that a year? Or what is that kind of looking like? Oh, uh, we've been doing one a quarter. Okay, for, so four times for a another year. Maryland, okay. um, and then we've had some other things. So that's. Do, do you feel like once a month for date night is enough? Um, it. When you were doing it, it did it feel like it, enough? Yeah, it felt like enough. I okay. mean, for us, I think for some of those, I know some of the weekly. I think what. When I've heard it's it's setting aside probably intentional time in the day mm -hmm. to spend time together, and that goes back to that quality time, yeah. right? Like, do you do that? We well, I think we're trying to figure out what that is. Okay, because and probably it, and probably it, when it is, when that is, right? So, like, I'm you know, nine thirty, ten o'clock yeah. at night. I, I'm mentally exhausted. Yeah, I feel like if Ivana asks me to do any simple. Yeah ordinary task that I would have no problem with at two o'clock at nine at nine thirty, I feels like I'm climbing yeah. Everest, you know, yeah. she's like, can you, do you mind grabbing yeah. whatever? I'm like, Oh, why? I can't. How could you ask me to, to climb that mountain? You know? I just wanted you to like pass my cup, but okay. You know, yeah, crazy right. person, but, um, you know, everybody has their like time of day that they're most active and energetic. And again, I'm a morning person. Mm -hmm. So like, like you, I hit the ground running. I'm, you know, fully awake right. after about 30, 45 minutes nice. of being awake. I'm all there no. um, without coffee. So do, do you drink coffee? I do drink coffee, but I've been trying to quit. Oh, I kind of go up really? and down. Yeah. Why do you want to quit? Um, well, coffee, I mean, caffeine, like anything else is an addictive substance, right? And it's also an energy sap. Um, so just because it's legal, I thought it gave you, um, I thought it gave you, I don't drink coffee, so I don't know, but I thought well, it gave you some energy or something. Well, it does give you energy, but it's like short term energy, right? Little, little burst. Little burst. So you drink and then what happens at like two o'clock? I don't know. I don't know. Do I you drink, drink coffee? No. You don't drink coffee? There you go. So, I <laughs> so generally it's like, it's like short bursts of energy. So okay. like you need to focus for like 45 minutes or whatever, but then you have crashes. So just like any drug, right? Okay. Like you crash yeah. after... Mine would it be leaves sugar. your that system. My, okay, yeah, so sugar. So same thing, yeah. right? Like sugar spikes your insulin. Feels so good. Spikes oh man, your this insulin. is going to be great. And then, and then you're crash. like on the other side. That's right. Yeah. Coffee I want to go to sleep. Caffeine does the same thing. Anytime you put, you know, a substance into your body that then Caffeine leaves. is a stimulant, right? It is a stimulant. Yeah, okay. So, so you're, you're trying to reduce that. So so back to the, the marriage side, once a month uh, might be enough for you um, in terms of that daily connection what time of day do you guys try to do that? Or are you working on that yeah. actively? Or We have been working on that actively, what we've actually found. And so we've been trying to sit out in the morning. Like I said, I, I generally like to get up and get going. Right. Um, but we've been sitting out on our back porch, um, turning on the fan. So like I said, it's changing hot. It's, it's hot. We got a, we got a ceiling fan. <laughs> it's 100 degrees outside. We got a ceiling fan. So we got an artificial breeze going. <laughs> okay, good. Uh, but we'll sit out there with our coffee, read the paper. Yeah. Read the Bible. So together, um, at the same time, <laughs> not necessarily together. <laughs> well, yeah, uh, okay. You're know, in the same so room, so we're in the same room. But do, that, do, that's, you, do you talk? Are you talking? That's it's, um, yes. Well, you're just so like, that's where you're like co-reading together. Well, that's where we're kind of there in the same space, okay. and so it's led to a few conversations that have been productive and helpful. So it's starting to have right. some fruit. So it starts to like generate some of that. So. Sometimes it's, you know, that that's a lot of places. A lot of times it's just about starting or changing and letting things kind of happening. Like it's never going to be perfect out yeah. of the gate, right? What do you say to people uh, that may not be parents yet, or maybe they are and they're like, how could you send your kids away, you know, like, or whatever, like for, for you and, and your yeah. wife to have some just alone talking time yeah. or couch time or whatever. What do you say to them? What do I say to them? Yeah. I don't know. I haven't had a lot of, I don't get a lot of that reaction. <laughs> Most of them are like, how can you have so many kids? Are you not like overwhelmed? Uh, it sounds like you're, you obviously are elevating your wife over your kids. Yes. So, I mean, you know, we've done that. I, I do. I, you know, when I watch the podcast with John, like I always picture the scene from Batman where the Riddler's got, you know, Robin in one cage and the damsel in distress in the other cage. Uh -huh. and just trying to put him in the quandary, you know, which one are you going to save? Uh -huh. And you're like, I'm going to save my wife, who's the damsel, right? Yeah. I mean, like the kid, we can possibly make more. They can, you know, fend for themselves. <laughs> like, you know, it, 
Um, so, kids, I, if you're watching this, he loves you. Too. Your father I, loves you very much. They do know I love them very much. <laughs> I know that. But they, you know, I think that's the thing is that we're trying to teach our kids. But I say the same thing. If it's right. between you and your mom, I'm picking your mom. Um, that's right. Love you. I'll love do you. anything for you. But except for lose your mom. Yeah. So I mean, like, so that that was. But so to the person who would say, you know, how can you send your kids away? It's because, hey, my kids are people. My job is to provide them opportunity. That's what I feel like my job is, right? To provide your kids opportunity? To provide my kids opportunity. I can't force them to take advantage of that opportunity, right? So, and I think that is the thing as a parent that's so hard, right? It's like, hey, I've created this opportunity, but to watch a kid not take advantage of that or not exceed or excel, right? Like that's when as a parent, you're like, I just want to, you know, can you not be 20 years down the way and understand? Like, what's, But so, I mean, the kids are just, they should integrate. So when you ask me, what would I tell a person who said, can you send the kids away? Yeah. Or why would you do My that? My answer is, the kids are to integrate into my life, into mine and my wife's life. My life isn't to orbit or center around my kids. Now Whoa. my kids. Whoa. Right? That's that's pretty countercultural, Jonathan. <laughs> my There's kids. There's a bunch of people that are like, like they're orbiting okay. those kids. Yeah. But and that's the thing. Like the my kids are, like you said, super important to me. Yeah. I love them dearly. I want them to have all that, I mean, that's the reason I homeschool. When they ask, why do I homeschool? because I want to provide you every opportunity in the world. And school and homeschooling, it's not because, you know, a lot of people think it's like, I have something against the public schools here. David went to public. We have a great school. I have nothing against that, right? It's about, hey, you know, for me, I, I was athletic. This is one thing that we've been struggling with, right? Like, because Emily and I have different levels of challenge and competitiveness. Mm -hmm. But I'm like, you know, kids, if you want to go pitch 100 softballs a day or hit 100 golf balls a day, you can do it. Right? You're, yeah. you're homeschooled. You have you all have the, day. You have the time. You have the time. A lot of time. I have, you know, we have the equipment. We're super blessed to have all this stuff, equipment. We have a big field in our back house. We live in this nice neighborhood. If you want to go serve a thousand tennis balls, but like, I mean, they can do whatever the opportunities for them to take advantage of are endless. And that's what I see my role is, but yes. Um, and why I homeschool my kids, because yes, while it is about providing them education and being able to control some of that, some of that to me is just like, hey, you can get your, I mean, that was the thing that I found was so funny, right? I told you, I had mono actually in second grade, oddly enough. You're only supposed to get it once. Somehow I kept getting wow. it. Actually, it lays dormant, so it can spike. But, you know, you were out of school for two weeks, right? And then it took you an hour to make it up. And you're like, well, what the heck was I doing for two weeks <laughs> if I could have done all the work in an hour? Yeah. Right? Like, And that comes from that, like, homeschooling stuff, like being productive. So, you know, I think that that is um, – with our kids, like I said, it, it's about them integrating into our life. And that's not to be misunderstood as we're not providing them things, we're not doing things, but they're there to plug into what I'm doing, not me centering it around. Just like the, you know, I'm not going to neglect them like I neglect my lawn. Right. 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 But I'm also not going to bend things just because I have kids. Right. Right. Does that make sense? Yeah. Um, now, I, I'm making a lot of sense. I mean, I'm centering a lot of things around them. I mean, to be able to homeschool. Yeah. Right. Like, I make a lot of sacrifices to be able to homeschool. Right. Um, but, yeah. But there is a difference between, you know, you being intentional with your kids, which obviously you are. Mm. Um, and basically letting them be the center of your universe. Right. You know, those are, yeah. those are, those are different mm -hmm. things. And, and here's the important thing, right? When we talk about 
Jesus and what we see in going in culture and faith, right? That is what we've seen kids growing up as. You, you're the most important. Everything centers around you. Yeah. Right? Right. Truth is your truth. Right. Centers around whatever you think it is. Or however you feel. However you feel. Right. Your identity is whatever you want to make it. Right. Right? These things, that's not, when you get told that over and over again, you, you start to believe those things. Yeah. Right? So I think there is some long term when you're trying to create people that are well grounded and emotionally grounded, right? To grow up in an environment that you understand that's not, you're the center of the universe. Right. Is important. Yeah. hundred <laughs> percent. And, and I've been, I've been in your office actually, when I came and you let yeah. me borrow some wall street journals, uh, yeah. for one of our trips. And, uh, I remember seeing jars yeah. on your shelf. Do you want to, to, to share about the jars and the marbles? Yeah, yeah. the jars, um, people have different reactions to those, but I have five jars. I have a jar for each one of my kids. Um, and then in those jars are little pea marbles. And there is one marble for every week of their life until they turn 18. I forget, it's like 1,800 and something. I don't remember exactly. It's over 1,000. But there, there are marbles in there. The idea then with that is it's a visual representation of time. Yeah. Time's our most important resource, right? Money, I can earn more. It comes, it goes, right? But time's a one-way, I heard it's a one-way river. It's a one-way flow, mm. right? You can't back up. You can't make more of it. Um, and so being able to put a visual representation on time and reminding myself that the time that I have with my kids, this is all the time that I have to, to do them. I mean, my oldest, right? Like, I mean, she's got a lot of habits and she's already fairly well set in her ways. My five-year-old, I still have a lot more room to like mold, right? Um, and, and I still have a lot with my 15-year-old, but it, it's a little bit different. But she, you know, there's those early years where their brain is making subconscious connections Right. When you hear about child development, there's the, you know, the things that they, their habits and things is very moldable up until five, six, seven. Right. Because their brains are very still getting put together and very flexible. After that, the brain kind of like your muscles and things have kind of locked down a little bit, you know, and now you're, you're kind of learning. Um, so that's the marbles. It's the representation of time for me. And then, and I appreciate when you came in my office, I want to tell you this. So you're like, you know, well, what do you do with the marbles? And I was like, well, I'll put them in that jar over there. And so I started since you left and we're in my office. And I thought, well, I'm just throwing the marbles over here, going to habit stacking. So what I've done now is each week as I take the marble out, rather than just throwing them in the jar, I've started taking each one and praying over the kids as I put the marble in the jar, right? Um, because that was something that I'd been convicted of and people were praying at their kids, you know, at night as they're going to bed. Yeah. I don't do that. Usually I'm sliding into the night. I'm frustrated. My kids aren't going to bed. I'm not in a mood to do that. But I started that. So that's a good place where it's like, it's just a time of remembering. It's a time of blessing. And so I just yeah. started doing that, um, stacking that habit on, praying for each one of those, praying for that time that I have with my kids. What have you learned or experienced having those jars visibly demonstrating because I love it you know yeah. I haven't done it yet but <laughs> I want to do yeah. it and I and I loved seeing it and and I I think that time like you said is so it's it's so valuable it's so important we waste so much of it um I know I do and um we don't get that time back you know with our kids we only have so much time before they leave the nest or at least mm tentatively uh, might be leaving the nest. So what have you learned from doing it like that, having those jars and pulling the marbles out and what's it done for you yeah. or your relationship with your kids? Have you noticed, you know? Yeah. Um, it is a just visual reminder of how little time that I have with them. Yeah. And, but it's also a visual reminder of how much time we have, right? That is... One of those where one of the Stoic philosophies, right, is memento um, memori, right? Remember death, 
right? So we put everything, if you put everything in perspective of death, mm. right? Your death, time that we have with the kids, that visual representation, um, it helps you put things in order, helps you put your life and things in perspective, right? Um, and so I think what that visual representation does is it helps you put your life in perspective. And it rem it's a daily reminder of that perspective because we tend to forget we sure things do. quick, right? Oh my gosh. Right? Like, you know, I can sit here and we, we are can- so forgetful. We can have this conversation and it can be super deep and I'm going to go and my kid's going to show up at the door, right? And have gone into my office because this is the most likely thing, like, you know, gone into my office and- you know, broke my computer and I'm going to forget that, hey, and, you know, I may lose my temper and go off them and I forget that perspective Yeah. in the short term. Right. And I'll yell at my kid and I'll be all upset. But putting in that perspective, what it should do, what it should do for me, right, is remind me, look, if my kid breaks my computer, I can buy another one. Yeah. How's this going to affect me in a year? It's not. It's not. That's so good. Right? Yeah, that's good. Like, that's where we forget. But how is it going to affect your kid yeah. if you overreact right. and you, right. you know, move to that right. really... If my kid just sees me, if he's just... Dark place of... Scared me, or yeah. if I'm just yelling at my kid all the time, or I'm always frustrated, or, you right. know, like, what's that perception of my kid going to have of me, right, and take away... Because they're going to emulate me. I mean, that's the thing that's scary about kids. Oh, right? it is, like, man. I the see kids it all the are time. the yeah. are mirrors, mm -hmm. right? Like that's where. So here's a parenting tip, right? Okay. Not, not a great parenting okay. tip, but a parenting tip is if you see something in your child that you don't like that they're doing, the first thing to do is look at yourself and fix it in yourself. Mm. Because your child most likely is picking it up from you. Yeah. Right? They're, they're little mirrors. It's so scary. Because it's <laughs> it like, is, they say some word it's and awful. you're like... It's awful. Where did you get that word? And then all of a sudden you realize you're saying it like every third word. You're like, I didn't even realize I was doing that. I, yeah. didn't, I didn't... You know, like, I know. You're cognitively not realizing the things that you're doing. Uh, but then when you watch your kids from a third you're like, well, gee, I sound just like that when I'm putting them to bed. So... Why do I expect any different? Yeah. Oh, my oldest daughter just yelled at my middle daughter about cleaning the dishes. That's exactly how I sound when I tell them to clean the dishes. And it makes you cringe when you hear it. You go, oh, why, why are you saying it like that? And you're like, oh, you, that sounds just like me. That's right. <laughs> so, oh, it's awful. So, you know, that, and that's hard. It is. But that's the way... I try to approach affecting change. Yeah. Right? Because that's where I always say be the verb, right? Be the action that you want to see. I can tell my kids, stop yelling at your siblings, <laughs> or I can learn to stop yelling myself. Right. Now, I'm not doing great at it. You know, like the, I get frustrated and sure. Me too. lose my temper Me all too. the time with yeah. them. Yeah, right. Um, but that's where if I can process and learn how to can develop that self-control in me and they see that they're going to learn more from that than me just telling them now i have to use words at times to tell them what's going on but um you know i think they learn so much more from our actions than from what we say you know it's where they say like communication right 90 percent of it in the words coming out of your mouth so Jonathan, we live in a culture today where everyone wants everything to be equal mm -hmm. or they want everything to be fair. And I, I'm, I'm all for fair and I'm all for equality. Mm -hmm. How do you handle that in business and how do you handle that right. in your family? Yeah, so I have one thing that I always say is fair is not equal and equal is not fair. And what we mean by that is particularly in business, right? Um, maybe you have three family employees that are all working in the business. Should they all get paid the same thing? Well, fair is not equal and equal is not fair. A lot of times the strategy is to pay them all equally, but that seems fair. 
but that might not be. Somebody may be providing more value. Somebody may have, you know, an MBA. Somebody may not. Like it's one of those where you need to pay the market value for that person in the business. Yeah. Um, and so that's how we look at that in businesses. A lot of times we have what we call our fairness flag and we raise them all the time, right? When we feel like something's going against us. Um, and most of the time when we don't know how to kind of come to terms with what is fair, we just default to equal, right? We're going to give everybody equal pay. We're going to give everybody equal shares. We're going to give everybody, yeah. you know, so um, in business that doesn't always equal isn't always fair. Right. Right. And fair doesn't mean that everybody has to get equal things. Got it. How does that apply in your marriage or in with your kids? Uh, so it's one thing that I, I do say this to my kids all the time because it's one thing that I'm trying to press upon them, right? I, I want to treat all my kids fairly, right? And, right. I, and I try to treat each one of them fair, but that doesn't mean that I'm ever going to be able to treat them all equal. They're going to need different things. They're different people. They're different humans. So when they come back and they look, right, um, I may, you know, so one of our child is, uh, her love language is gifts. She may get more things than my other children, right? But, but if that's we, not fair. But that's not fair. <laughs> well, because I know what she emotionally needs right. to feel loved. And I know what you need because, you know, I have one that wants hugs. Right. So feel it, right? Yeah. I don't need things. They just need time and hugs. Right. So, I, you know, so like that's where that may apply, you know, just because we get the first one a car, our oldest is turning 15, we need another driver. And I keep trying to express to them, we're getting a car. It's not your car, right? It's our car, but you need to drive because we've got too many places to go with five kids and five things. Yeah. It doesn't mean that I have to buy every kid down the line a car mm. after that, right? Mm. Um because well, won't that scar them for life and make them messed up and they'll have to like have some, you know, couch time mm -hmm. for Maybe. months and months and months. My dad bought my older sister a car, but he didn't buy me one. Mm -hmm. And so well, now I'm messed up. Well, that's true. And I went through the same thing. <laughs> my brother and I went through that same thing. Right. Um, and, you know, I think that's one of those things that we have to learn as we grow up. And I think even myself. I mean, that's when we said in family business, like that was the hardest thing, right? Like everybody wants to be treated fairly and we want to treat everybody fairly, but- But fair isn't always equal. Well, fair isn't always equal. So how do we figure out what fair is? Right. Right. Like that um, was always a challenge because I mean, one of them was, you know, like who gets to work in the office and who got to go work in the shop, right? Maybe that's fair. Like we should be able to split our time equally in the shop and in the thing. But I had to look at, um, my one employment said, well, one of us took accounting classes and knows how to do accounting. We both know how to sell in the store. Somebody has to do accounting and somebody has to sell in the store. Like the decision is being made. It's yeah. not a, I'm personally saying you can't come sit in the office for equal amount of time. Right. But you know, what are you going to do? Like, so like things get divided up in sometimes in the ways that they're forced. And then when we feel like that's unfair, like that's our issue. Yeah. Right. Our emotions are our issue. That's something that we have to deal with. So when we feel like something's unfair, right, we have to feel, we have to figure that's out so, that's why so, that is. That's so countercultural too, though. Like our, our emotions, what did you say? Our emotions, emotions are our problem. Are, are our problem. Right. I mean, there's a lot of people that don't believe that. Like, Their emotions are your problem. I, you're making me feel, feel something, something. And so I'm going to, you know, right. let you know, um, your thing is offending me or, or, um, you know, whatever the thing is, I feel something. And so there is that, uh, difference between mm -hmm. it being my situation, my problem, mm -hmm. controlling my emotions mm -hmm. or my body or whatever yep. versus it's your fault. Yep. You know, you're triggering me mm -hmm. or you're whatever. Yep. And obviously there's times where other people are actually 
you know, saying something that's hurtful to you or whatever. And like, yeah, I, I mean, it, it, obviously they're saying something that is causing me emotional pain. So that's something. And, and I'm not saying that people can't cause emotional pain. No, I mean, we all experience that. I mean, of course. I, I mean, I'll go back to, I mean, that that's part of been my personal struggle is growing up. That's why I give myself the hard time for writing the short bus, right? Like, right. That caused a lot of emotional scarring and st- stress that I've had to deal with over 40 years yeah. to figure out, right? What is fair in education? You know, we, you know, I worked harder than you worked. We, we spoke about this, right? So it's only fair that we get paid the same because we work the same amount. But wait a minute, you, you generated twice the revenue I did. Right. Even though we work just the same amount. Right. So where, 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 what's fair? Yeah. What's equal? So, um, anyway, I kind of go off. So that, that's, uh, to me, that's the, you know, fair is not equal and equal is not fair. As all of us, we're trying to teach our kids, but in business, that's something that you're going to have to address because that fairness flag show up all the time, every day, right? Between your employees that employee you got, I mean, cause that's the same thing. Employees are like kids. This employee's like, well, I got this and they didn't, you didn't give me that. Well, right. there, there may be a reason. They got there a computer. Stuff. I don't have to give everybody the same thing. <laughs> yeah. Like th- there's no law that says I must give all my employees the exact amount of pay or, Not yet. or anything. <laughs> Not yet. <laughs> so, you know. So give me a, give me a mistake. So at the lifeguards, you know, we talk about cultivating right. wisdom from mistakes. Mm-hmm. So okay. we, we find that, for whatever reason, various reasons, we tend to learn from our mistakes or the mistakes of others more than our successes. You know, so mm-hmm. would you share a mistake in business? What's a what's a business mistake that you've made? Either acquiring the business you have now or one in the past. You don't have to be, you know, get into too many nitty gritty details, but give us some sense of what was what was the mistake and what actually happened. So one of my mistaken thought processes when I acquired this business. Um, was actually thinking the financing was going to be really easy for me because I worked at the SBDC, so I knew all the SBA bankers. I'd help people get SBA loans. I felt like, you know, I had my good credit score. I knew I had the cash. Um, You know, I knew where my weaknesses were with a little bit of collateral. Um, You know, I I didn't have that as much as I would hope or, you know, that was going to be my downfall. And then trying to find a loan turned out to be super crazy hard. I thought it was going to be the easy part for me, you know, just having kind of all those pieces. Um, and, and that turned out to be very hard. And, you know, what I learned from that, and I feel like I continually learn, so that's just the example, is it's always those places where we think it's going to be easy mm-hmm. or that thing that we think we have locked down yeah. that then always rears its head and shows up and turns out to be the difficult part, right? Um, so, you know, whether you're running a race um, or whatever, it, it's always the parts that I feel like, and so I try to be cautious about those. I tried to learn myself, but I continue to run into that ditch where it's, you know, the it's like, oh, I got that, I got that. I got that part, like that part's easy. And, you know, or I've done everything I can do there. So I have that. And then it always turns out to be that that's the place that shows up. That's like, uh, you know, I needed to have spent more time or I needed to be more open or I needed to be more kind of flexible to the situation. You know, I think that's where that pride comes in, right? Like that's where you see that pride. Like when our pride shows up, in those points of I have this piece, this piece, or this piece taken care of, it's generally about the time it feels like it slips out of hand. Hey, please subscribe to The Lifeguard Show. We'd love for you to be a part of our community and make sure that you ring that bell so you can be notified of our next video release. And if you have any suggestions of content, please contact us through our website, thelifeguardshow.com, or you can leave us a comment in one of the videos on our YouTube channel.